This is a podcast from BFM 89.9, The Business Station. 8.36 a.m. You are listening to The Morning Run. I'm Shazana Mokhtar with Wong Shaoning. In half an hour, we have the opening bell where we check out how Bursa Malaysia begins the trading day. But before that, let's talk about Alibaba, although not he of the 40 Thieves fame. The government is intensifying efforts to combat rent-seeking or Alibaba culture to reduce losses to the shadow economy. So rent-seeking refers to the practice of manipulating public policy or economic conditions for financial gains without contributing back to the economy. This includes manipulating government agencies for monopoly on projects and licenses, insurance for permits and licenses as well, and allocation for grant subsidies and tariffs. Now, the Prime Minister said that losses due to such activities are estimated at almost 1% of GDP. As such, the Economy Ministry, together with other government agencies, will study and draft policies and also come up with legal strategies to curb rent-seeking activities. However, analysts have observed that Putrajaya's bid to curb rent-seeking must start with itself as poor governance, lack of transparency and the misallocation of natural human and financial resources are all contributing factors. So what are the reforms needed to stamp out corruption and improve governance and how should the government implement better enforcement? For some insights on this, we speak to Carmelo Ferlito, CEO of Center for Market Education. Good morning, Carmelo. Thanks for joining us. So as mentioned, the Prime Minister intends to introduce laws to combat Alibaba business practices or rent-seeking activities that negatively impact the economy. Could you help us understand what Alibaba culture or rent-seeking refers to in this context? Well, uh, I think that, uh, to put it in a, in a very simple way, is uh, the idea to get uh, an economic benefit uh, without uh, a proper economic effort. So to, uh, to gain uh, economic uh, benefit uh, thanks to uh, protection, uh, legislation, uh, favors, connections in a somehow in a passive way that is granted through existing legislation rather than by uh, getting involved with a sound economic activity. So, Camilla, what are the current laws and policies in place to address rent seeking and why aren't they enough to stem this issue? I mean, what are some of the loopholes here? Well, I think that actually the, the problem is the opposite that. Uh, rather than having laws and policies in place to address rent seeking, we have policies in place that favor rent seeking. And in this regard, I think that the position that the government uh, is taking on the matter is very important, positive and and welcome. Uh, Although I do recognize that there may be some big obstacles in, in finding the right way to implement this, but at least uh, the fact that a stand against rent seeking has been taken is a positive fact, and uh, I- I- indeed we we don't need uh, probably new laws or policies, but we need to dismantle laws and policies that create rent seeking uh, behaviors. Policies and reforms are only lip service without enforcement. Is it then a question of reforming implementation of existing policies rather than drafting new ones? And how do you think enforcement uh, should be upgraded? I think, yes. Uh, Obviously, you know, when you have a policy, like in example, approval permits or uh, certain rules about procurement uh, or subsidies, so policies that create and favor rent-seeking mentality, I think that the the, the biggest issue is uh, uh, removing, having the political will of removing these kind of policies uh, and uh, remaining firm uh, about uh, these removals. So not to replace these policies with with new ones that projects and then rent it to others. How do you think the government can tackle this issue among its ranks, uh, among its ranks, as this is a deep and long rooted practice? Uh, indeed, I think that uh, the, the the best practice in this regard is again uh, liberalization. So, um, giving the possibility to uh, private providers to provide goods and services without. Um, we, without um, the need of um, permissions and without a process that is decided by the government. Because obviously when provisions of good services processes is designed by the government, 
then the, 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 the project, the design itself can go into uh, the favor of uh, uh, government officials uh, and so on and so forth. The, the, more the, the, the more the market is open, the less these things can happen. Now, the government is trying to use digitalization to boost transparency and efficiency. It's been on their agenda. So how would it actually help in terms of driving meritocracy and competence? I think that it could help in the sense that could smoothen uh, processes, uh, removing, in example, arbitrary judgments from officials. But again, I don't think it is a magic stick uh, in itself. And uh, indeed, I do believe that the biggest obstacle that uh, the government will face is uh, to get the people eventually to to get used to live without all these uh, patronage systems. So it's a, it's a cultural issue that cannot be dismantled simply by law because for decades people have been used to run businesses in a certain way. Uh, so th- th- this thing is part of the economic system of Malaysia, but not only of Malaysia, there are many other countries. And this mainly in this means introducing a, a cultural revolution, I would say. And as people became used to this system over decades, it will probably take decades of commitment to this uh, this mentoring process to get a counter-cultural revolution. What are the reforms that you would like to see to drive fairer competition and transparency in these activities currently mired in rent-seeking culture? I I think that we need to force the hand uh, in the direction of liberalization. So uh, highest degree of freedom in providing goods and services, no price controls, uh, no subsidies, favoring also the uh, technical progress through economic, uh, through entrepreneurial concentration at, at a certain point. So uh, favoring also the idea that businesses can grow and all this can be achieved only reducing the number of regulation and introducing more radical liberalization processes. Carmelo, thanks very much for speaking with us. That was Carmelo Ferlito, CEO of the Centre for Market Education, weighing in on the announcement made by Prime Minister Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim that the government is looking to uh, curb Alibaba practices in the economy. Um, I, I A lot of interesting points that mm. was raised, uh, but I personally feel that there needs to be more clarity on what the government really means and how they're planning to uh, tackle this. Yeah, what is an Alibaba? Who is an Alibaba? What what kind of practice is considered one? So the scope is, to me is still uncertain because mm-hmm. we do have comments from the Ministry of Economic Affairs, Refugee Ramli, uh, from June, saying that this refers to businesses uh, of Malaysians that uh, tend that sub subcontracted to non citizens. Mm-hmm. So that's a very specific uh, yes. segment as well. But then there are other business practices in our economy that could also fall under the rubric of this rent seeking activity, right? So yeah. are those uh, that are seen as legitimate? Are they also going to be uh, tackled or reformed under the these uh, new rules. Yeah, would you say that uh, a monopoly is a form of rent seeking then? I mean, is it, sorry, is it a form of Alibaba practice where you only have one party, one company uh, given the green light to operate this solely? Is that a form of Alibaba? I, so the definition I think requires clarity. Now, in terms of Carmelo's comments, in terms of fully liberalizing the market, yes, I think we we like capital markets to be, well, we like free markets, but there also needs to be a framework in which this operates. Uh, it cannot be free for all. The question is, we do in Malaysia, we do have this framework. Is there enforcement though when there is, let's say, price manipulation? Then the role of MyCC, all these parties come into being and it's important that this exists also. This is a conversation that's going to be continuing uh, further down the line as well. 8.47 in the morning. We're heading into a quick break, but when we come back, we're going to discuss the performance and prospects of Selangor's economy with analysis from Zafri Zulkifli of MIDF. Stay tuned, BFM 89.9. You have been listening to a podcast from BFM 89.9, The Business Station. For more stories of the same kind, download the BFM app.